So I just learned about a fairly elementary solution to the basal problem, and so I thought I'd make a video about it. So let's first recall that the basal problem is to find a closed form for the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. So in other words, the sum of the reciprocal of the squares of the natural numbers. This is also the Riemann zeta function evaluated at two. And this solution is due to Apostle, who has a pretty famous calculus book that um, was used widely at one point at least. We're going to use three main tools along this solution. First is a geometric series sum. So that's the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of t to the n is 1 over 1 minus t. And then next is this arctangent or inverse tangent integral. And so we've got the integral of 1 over a squared plus t squared dt is 1 over a arctan of t over a. And then finally, we've got this change of variables formula for double integrals, where when we change from an xy plane to a uv plane, we pick up this thing called the Jacobian, which is a determinant of a certain matrix. So we'll see all this shake up when we get to it. Okay, so let's jump into this solution. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll re-index this sum just a little bit so that it starts at zero. So I'll go from n equals zero to infinity, and now this needs to look like one over n plus one squared. Okay, nice. But now I'm gonna take one over n plus one squared and write each copy of n plus one slightly differently. So exactly what they'll look like is this. So I'll have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of x to the n plus one over n plus one evaluated from zero to one. So evaluating at one will give us one over n plus one, evaluating at zero clearly gives us zero. And then we'll have y to the n plus one over n plus one evaluated from zero to one. But now we think about each of these kind of evaluations as zeroth integrals. And so we can pass these zeroth integrals to first integrals or single integrals by taking the derivative. So let's do that. So this is going to turn into the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n dx, the integral from 0 to 1 of y to the n dy. So again, you can think about that two different ways. We took a derivative turning a 0 integral to a single integral, or we passed an antiderivative from this step to this step. Okay, now we'll take those two single integrals and multiply them together into a double integral. And we're allowed to do this for a couple of reasons. Most importantly, that they're over the same interval. Okay, so that's gonna give us the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of the integral from zero to one, the integral from zero to one of x times y all to the n power dx dy. So now this is an iterated integral, and I want to change this iterated integral to a double integral. And meanwhile, I will exchange the order of summation and integration. So that'll give me the double integral over the unit interval squared of the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x, y to the n. And then we have our differential area component in the x, y plane. So I'll put d, a, x, y for that. Okay, now I'll apply my geometric series rule to rewrite this as the double integral over the unit interval squared, so that's like the unit square of one over one minus x times y, and then I have again dAxy. Now from here, I'm gonna make a change of variables to move this from the xy plane to the uv plane. And here I'll set x equal to u minus v, and then I'll set y equal to u plus v. Okay, good. So in the end, we'll have our double integral over our new region D, which is this transformed unit square. And then we'll have one over one minus U squared plus V squared, which is what we get from replacing X and Y with U and V. And then we have the absolute value of the determinant of this Jacobian. 
So we get that from taking the derivative of x with respect to u and v, giving us a 1 here, a negative 1 here, and then a y with respect to u and v. So that gives us a 1 here and a 1 here. And then we'll have dA u v, where that's our differential area component in the u v plane. And then you can use a determinant rule to figure out this determinant is negative 2, but then taking its absolute value, you'll get that that's plus 2. And the absolute value is built into this change of variables formula. So in the end, we have the integral over this region d of 2 over 1 minus u squared plus v squared, and then dA u v. Okay, so now let's pick up from there. So this is where we left ourselves our sum of reciprocals of squares was equal to this integral in the uv plane over our region d, which was a rotated and contracted unit square. The contraction put up this number two here. That's why we have that. Okay, now we'd like to change this double integral into an iterated integral. But because of the orientation of our rotated square, this actually naturally splits into two iterated integrals. So we'll have two times the, integ of the integral from zero to half and then the integral from minus u to u of this guy. So this will be one over one minus u squared plus v squared dv du because v is running from minus u to u when u is between zero and half and then plus two times the integral from half to one, and then the integral from, let's see, it'll be u minus one to one minus u of one over one minus u squared plus v squared, again, dv du. Okay, nice. Now we can note that with respect to v, each of these are even functions. And our region of integration is symmetric about the v-axis. So that means we can change this integral from minus u to u to be an integral from 0 to u if we double this. In other words, multiply it by 2. So the 2 becomes a 4. And then we can do the same thing over here. So change this to a 0. And then this turns into a 4. Okay, so that's starting to look good. Now we're ready to use our arctan integral, but we have to see who's playing the role of t and who's playing the role of a. Well, since we're integrating in the inside with respect to v, that means this v squared is like our t squared. And that means this thing right here, one minus u squared is playing the role of a. So that means this is going to look a little bit gnarly at first, but it won't be too bad. We'll have 4 times the integral from 0 to half of 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. That's like our 1 over a type term. And then we'll have the arctan of v over a, but then we can evaluate that at u, giving us u over the square root of one minus u squared. Evaluating at zero gives us zero, so we don't really need to worry about that bit. So this is gonna be du, then we'll have something similar to this for this. So four and then the integral from half to one of one over the square root of one minus u squared and then the arctan of one minus u over the square root of one minus u squared du. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. We've gotten this down to two single integrals. And now for each of these, we'll make a clever substitution that will make the, all of this like fall apart into something quite nice. So for this first one, we'll let u equal sine theta. So that means that du is cos theta d theta. Okay, so let's see. That's going to turn this first one into 4. And then we have the integral from 0 to pi over 6. Pi over 6 because sine of pi over 6 is a half. And then we'll have 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. But 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. Take the square root, so we have 1 over cosine theta. And then we'll have the arctan of sine theta over cosine theta. So the sine theta comes from this u, the cosine theta comes from the same place here. And then our du, 
will be cosine theta d theta. So we have cos theta d theta. Okay, so that's our entire first integral. But this cosine will cancel with this cosine. And then next, this sine over cosine is tangent. But now we're taking the inverse tangent of the tangent where the argument is between 0 and pi over 6. So that means the inverse function will cancel out the function, just leaving us with theta. So here we'll have 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 6 of 2 theta d theta. So I brought a 2 in there just so that'll integrate out nicely. Okay, so now let's put this one on hold and move on to this second integral. So we'll make a different change of variables here. We'll say u is equal to the cosine of 2 theta. So that means that du is equal to minus 2 times the sine of 2 theta d theta. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. So this two here will combine with this four here to give us an eight. And then this minus sign will flip the bounds of integration. But then after flipping the bounds of integration, we will re-achieve the same bounds of integration that we had here, just because cosine of zero is one. So that gives us a zero for our lower bound. And then cosine of pi over three is a half. So that gives us a pi over six for our upper bound. Again, switching the bounds of integration cancels this minus sign out. So in the end, we have plus eight and then the integral from zero to pi over six of one over the square root of one minus u squared, but that's gonna be the square root of one minus cosine squared. So that'll give us sine of two theta. And then we'll have the arctan of one minus cosine two theta over sine two theta. And then out here from the du component, we get another sine of 2 theta d theta. So let's see, this sine of 2 theta will cancel this sine of 2 theta. And then using double angle identities, we'll see that this 1 minus cosine 2 theta over sine of 2 theta, again, simplifies down to tangent. So I won't work out those details, but that's not too hard to see. So like I said, this simplifies down to the tangent of theta. So now we can take one of those twos from the eight and bring it in so we have two theta. So we'll have plus four times the integral from zero to pi over six of two theta d theta. But now we can add these together and that'll give us six times the integral from zero to pi over six of two theta d theta, which is the same thing as six times theta squared evaluated from zero to pi over six. But notice evaluating that at pi over six and then multiplying by six gives us exactly what we want, pi squared over six, which is of course the well-known value of the sum of reciprocals of squares. And that's a good place to stop.